this is the basic equivalent of what we're looking at today. Super Monkey Ball for the Nintendo GameCube. Ready? Go! It's the early 2000s. Sega was not in the best of places with the Dreamcast underperforming and the company being in significant financial trouble. It was time for a change and that unfortunately led to their withdrawal from the console market and shifting to third party gaming development on what was their competitor systems. This would of course lead to Sonic coming to Nintendo platforms and their other well known franchises to pop up elsewhere. But it was also at this time that a new series would roll onto a specifically cube-shaped console and whack gamers silly with dull bananas. On June 23, 2001, Amusement Vision and Sega introduced Monkey Ball to the arcades. Having a banana for a joystick would make any game popular, and it running on Naomi made it a perfect candidate to get ported to the Dreamcast. But with the issues plaguing service games, obvious tweaks were needed to make the shift over to another system in this case being the GameCube, and this would lead to the release of Super Monkey Ball. This game was released on the GameCube's launch day of November 18th, 2001, and it was a moderate success both commercially and critically. Now I've been looking forward to this episode as I have some good memories with this franchise, mainly with Monkey Ball Jr. on the GBA, but I forgot what happened to my copy. I know I don't own it now. By the way, if you're wondering where this game got its super from, that's because it's an enhanced port filled with modes not present in the original Monkey Ball Arcade. Makes sense to me, and I haven't had my daily dose of potassium. So I'm looking forward to playing where the franchise really got its start. I did play the original Monkey Ball once at a convention, and it was fun, but this is more fun, and I'm going to show you guys why and how as we take a better look at Super Monkey Ball. Already thought there would be a little problem with memory as a warning came up with a free space notice, but it was only for if I wanted to save replays, but that's for a different section of this video that we'll get to later. The attract screen gives you a very loose understanding of what's going on. You have these monkeys, they like bananas, now they're going to roll in transparent balls to get them. Guess they're not agile enough to get them through conventional means, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I've risked life and limb to get Blue Thunder on the action, Max. We can select three different games, but for this section we'll focus only on the main game. After a few more selections, we're properly introduced to the four monkeys. Ai Ai, Mimi, Baby, and Gong Gong. They only act as avatars and don't show any difference between them, so I'll be going through them one by one beginning with Ai Ai. Of course we're going to start with the beginner stages, cause I'm not a hard ass to start at expert, plus it'll serve as a good warm up and help explain everything better. The object is to get from your starting position to the goal in a narrow or wide array of levels or floors. You can also collect bananas along the way, specifically of the Dole variety. Remember when product placement was more silly and not all up in your face? I don't have the notoriety to get a sponsorship, so I'll be snacking on good old grocery store bananas. They're probably better than Dole anyway. You control your monkey in a ball? That's super with only the stick. The only other button that does anything in game is the A button, which only changes the map size on the bottom right corner. So like I said, the C stick is the only thing to worry about, might as well be a banana. I believe the levels in this game overall is based on labyrinth ball puzzles that are kinda popular in Japan even to this day. I think they were recently used in Resident Evil 8, but I would argue this is more stressful in some ways, you'll see why soon. 
While having to get to the goal, you'll be pressed for time with this bomb clock. If you're unable to reach the goal within the allotted time given, you'll lose a life, but you're more than likely going to lose a life by falling off the floor. Trust me, it's going to happen a lot, so get used to hearing the word FALLOUT and the many monkey screams. Once you lose all your lives, it could be game over if you want it to be. You have five continues to use, the only downside is your score resetting, if you so happen to care about that. You'll get more points if you go for the bananas as opposed to not. I did two runs to compare and there was a 60,000 point difference. So if you want a high score or an extra one up when you collect a hundred of them, look for the fruit in yellow or orange if you're colorblind or not thinking straight. Name a yellow fruit. Orange. Obviously when you go through the goal line on one floor, you'll move on to the next with your sudden flying powers. You also get bonus points if you finish a floor with more than half the timer remaining or at least that's how it appears. Every fifth floor is a bonus stage where you only have to collect as many bananas as you can before the time expires. You won't lose a life here if you fall off or run out of time, just lose out on additional points or great nutrients. The beginner difficulty only contains 10 stages and when you finish the final floor, you'll be congratulated by your monkey of choice and receive some play points which will play a key role later on in the video. For now we have credits to play through. The credits are interactable where you can collect as many dull bananas you can, all the while avoiding the letters of the names of those involved or their roles in the game. If you hit a letter, you'll bounce around and lose 10 bananas, and it takes too damn long to my liking, but you'll get a ranking out of it if you care. I got Hanuman Langer. Those are fighting words! Now it's time to try the advanced stages, this time with Mimi. It's got its own things going, introducing new elements like blockade, shorter times, and completely different stage concepts, and there may be a slight remix of a beginner floor thrown in to stretch it out. I didn't think the first 14 floors were too difficult, but I would soon hit a roadblock at the 15th floor. Holy hairy monkey boobs, I had issues controlling here. Let me remind you that the C-Stick is all you have to control your monkey in a ball, and trying to anticipate the slopes or moving at all made me anxious or stressed the fuck out to the point where it pissed me off. I couldn't figure it out and I used up all my continues. Actually, I lied, I rage quit, but it made me question something. What am I actually controlling? The camera may suggest you're controlling the ball with the monkey inside, but I think with the way the floor moves with your movements of the stick, that you're actually controlling the stage rather than the monkeys and their balls. It would make sense considering that's how a labyrinth puzzle works, with you controlling the entire board to maneuver the ball, so thinking like that could give me a better understanding of the mechanics, but then again I could be overthinking this as the replays show the stage still while you move. So what do I know? Fucking nothing, that's what. I obviously don't know how to get past this 15th floor and I'm stuck at the halfway point. But now's a good time to look at practice mode. This is where you can try out any floor that you've reached and played through all three difficulties. No doubt a perfect tool for speedrunners to hone their craft, but my purpose is to figure out how to get past this freaking floor, picking baby as a metaphor for putting on training wheels. I gave it my all for another 5 minutes getting a little farther, but it was an uphill battle that I couldn't fight and win right now. I'll have to keep practicing off camera, but it's probably going to take a while for me to figure this out without looking it up. If I'm sucking now at the advanced stages, I can't wait to see what the expert stages are like. Gone gone, I'm going to do my best, please don't eat me. <laughs> These stages aren't a laughing matter. They're insanely... fucked. Floor 1 was nothing, Floor 2 tempts you with two goals to go for, but you'd have to deal with a narrower pathway. There are green goals that can be found on levels, sometimes you'd have to look for them, other times they blatantly taunt you in the open. What they do is warp you to the bonus floor and next section of floors, but I'm not good enough just yet to even attempt the douche ones, so I'll leave them to the speedrunners. 
The third floor was bonkers with half the stage rotating around and I was honestly lucky to get through the goal as I failed numerous times beforehand and my performance only got worse by floor 4. By far the longest and complex obstacle course I've seen and that's the best way to describe it with multiple holes, hill dips, moving platforms among other things that I couldn't reach and after multiple lives lost and a few continues, I came to the conclusion that I wasn't going to get any farther. I never said I was good at this game, much like in real life. I'm sure I can get through these difficult floors if I had more time, but that'll have to come at some other point when I have it. But that is how you play in the general sense. It's got variety for sure with many simple and crazy concepts waiting to be played. I surely don't know what to expect and I'm going to try not to look it up unless totally necessary but I'm sure they're going to get as hard as the stages I'm already stuck on, so I'm going to spend a long time in practice mode. Or I can just play the stages I have reached with someone else in competition mode, wishful thinking as I don't have anyone else to play with. But if you have three friends, you can set a split screen race through as many stages as you want. I'm sure it'd be fun if someone else was there alongside to enjoy it. What a way to ruin the fun. The music was composed by these three names whose letters just flew into my face. And you can definitely tell it was made for an arcade like game such as this. I also think there's something Sega-like about it, or I'm just confusing it with basic Japanese techno. The main game tunes for the most part are vibrant, upbeat, and fit right into the stages or at least their difficulty. The sound doesn't change too much unless the texture of the stages does, but they set the tone for the stages you're gonna roll on for sure. But there are more tunes to hear elsewhere in the rest of the game, with one particular track hitting me right in the nostalgia. As I said earlier, the game is called Super Monkey Ball for its additional additions, giving more than just the main game to play around with. We'll start with the party games where there's three to choose from, and we'll just go over them from left to right, starting with Monkey Race. The best way to describe this is Mario Kart's Baby Park on steroids. You have boosters, items, and varied courses. All that's missing is carts, but that's substituted for balls, which makes it a little more slippery, like Sonic R. And if you know how much that game stinks, you can probably see it bleed into this. And the blood is yellow. Like lemonade. The first track wasn't so bad, but the second was a huge kick in the monkey balls. I was playing the Grand Prix, by the way. I didn't get to try single race or time attack because my energy and excitement for this game type was drained after suffering through this track. It kept the baby park format, but it's filled with bumps all around the course. It's very... Hilly, so you can't go too fast or else you'll bounce around or potentially off the course. If the damn computers don't knock you off first, Jesus Christ I got my ass handed by them. Even when I pulled ahead, I got sent right back or completely off the track. Note to self, never be the first in monkey race or else you'll get polygonal. It got so bad that I rage quit again. These freaking monkeys are pissing me the fuck off. I didn't realize this game will make me go bananas! We'll just move right along to Monkey Fight, by far the most popular party game on here, and it's easy to see why. After playing that racing BS, I can let out my aggression by punching my fellow monkey family. That's pretty much what you do here, knock your opponents with your boxing gloves off the stage. Much like... No! 
You get points depending on who you knock off the stage, and you have item boxes appearing every now and then that could potentially give you a leg up if you're able to grab one. Whoever has the most points at the end of the time will win the round and you can move on to the next stage that you chose. I chose to go through all three in this first to three wins type tourney, and I'll be honest, I struggled to stay alive that every single computer had two wins by round five. How the hell do they allow a tie? But I was able to pull off the biggest comeback I've ever seen myself pull off in a fight, and I'm a massive whiskey. I figured out that the best strategy was not to just go on the offensive, but have a little defense thrown in as well, because when you're ahead, you'll be the most valuable to knock out, which can let an opponent catch up. But if you have a good lead and stay clear of the ledge, you can win the day like I did by the skin of my hairy monkey tits. The last of the party games is Monkey Target. It's an interesting concept that reminds me of pilot wings in a way, with you having to launch your monkey from this ramp in order to fly onto the targets if you can, all the while trying to grab bananas that could give you more points, as well as building up this meter to grant you special abilities if you so choose to use them. Before every round, you have to spin this wheel that'll determine the conditions of your flight. I more often than not added obstacles, and I didn't do too good, so it's fine. No, really, it's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm not perfect, even though you expect me to be. <laughs> Off to the mini games, and this is where those play points come into play. They must have known what they were doing when they named it that. Each minigame cost 2,500 upset play points, and it took a while to accumulate the ones I have now, and I'm still short. I looked real quick online to see if there was a quicker way to accumulate more play points or unlock the minigames another way. I did have one hope in Eric from Games Radar, but it must be a leftover from ye old days of rumor, as that doesn't work. Hope we don't meet in real life, Eric, or else you're gonna get run over by myself and my ball for deception. We're gonna on a patch right now. A good tip I learned, on the other hand, was this memory card trick. When you get up to 2,500 points, save the data, then remove the memory card just before you spend your points. That way the game can't save the transaction, and you'll keep the points you got. It's ingenious, but I still had to grind for some more play points, so I did just that pretty much mastering the beginner difficulty and floors in the process, which led me to discovering something additional when you beat the game without losing a life. If you manage to get through the chosen difficulty without losing a single life, you'll have the opportunity to try extra levels and see how you fare. I honestly didn't know about this, which explains why I was so illy prepared to record this properly, and turns out there are extra and even master stages to be found on the other difficulty choices, and all I can say is good luck to you because there's no chance I'm ever going to reach them. I was able to beat them just fine and like them too. But I wasn't able to reap in the rewards with play points as I was playing in multiplayer and they just taunted me to try the other difficulties. This is what happens when we let the monkeys out of their balls. They get high opinions of themselves. But I'll tell you what, my fellow citizens, let's keep the monkeys inside their balls because they got no right to be high strung. After a few more single player rounds of the main game, I got the right number of points. And with the memory card trick in mind, we can start looking at the mini games proper with Monkey Billiards. Out of the three that are available, this was the one I was least familiar with. I mean, I know how to play this Q sport, but with monkeys it can be totally different, but it's just straight nine ball with monkeys and I had fun because I won and pulled off some sweet shots. Seriously though, it's a competent pool game, try it out. Monkey Bowling is next, another game alongside Monkey Fight that I remember from Junior, but I don't remember it being good. You have to aim using this meter that's kind of hard to time, then you'll have to adjust the power and spin in order to get the shot you desire. It's pretty tough to time the aim, and the spin is very finicky, but you may get your spares or strikes with enough time and effort. Lastly, we have Monkey Golf. This I remember vividly from Monkey Ball Jr. I used to play it all the time more than the main game, but as I played this version of it, I remember it being better. 
I won't lie, I did pretty damn terrible after the first few holes. For one reason or another, most of the 18 holes were just difficult to get my monkey in a hole under par or even at all. You have to set up your shot, adjust the power to your liking, and time the power as well, but most of the time I just go get a straight Apparently that stands for out of bounds, but you're missing an O in there somewhere. At the end, I was surprised to see any sort of award ceremony, but I guess they gotta make me feel better. So I ranked in. And the award for the worst monkey golf performance goes to... Me! Thank you all very much. I'd like to dedicate this award to the monkey that suffered through my shit playing ability, but I promise to keep practicing to make sure it doesn't vomit in its ball anymore. But in the meantime... The very last thing to shoe in are the options. It didn't have much to really show or care about. Maybe besides the replays that I needed more memory to even use. You ever heard of Food Fight? I think this was the first game to have replays as a feature or novelty. Funny to see this game carry that on in a way. Super Monkey Ball, though starting sluggish, became a hit in due time. Though I'm not quite sure what its sales figures were, but I saw the number was close to over 700,000 units. The game would soon get a sequel, then another game, or two, or a few. It would eventually spawn a whole franchise with new games still coming out, with a remastered dub Banana Mania set to release on October 5th, 2021. Amusement Vision took an extended hiatus from developing Super Monkey Ball after four games, leaving Sega and Marvelous to take the helm as devs at points, to mixed results. AV would morph into Ryuga Gotoku Studio and struck gold with the Yakuza series, but they're back in the helm for the remaster coming soon. Sega itself has seen its fair share of ups and downs since, definitely not the company it used to be, but it's still hanging on and has had a bit of a retro resurgence in the form of granting other developers permission to make new entries to old franchises, which has been successful thus far. Now with Super Monkey Ball getting similar treatment, it makes me wonder what other lesser known franchises in Sega's catalog could make a comeback. We can dare to dream. So. What is my rate to play? Whoa, man, this took longer than I thought it would. I thought it wasn't going to take as long as previous videos because this is technically an arcade game, but with all the new game modes to play as well as the main game that's pretty fun by itself, there's a good reason why they added the Super in its name. If it was a simple port of the arcade to the GameCube, it could have fared just fine, but without the new party and minigames it brought, it may have not been remembered as much as it is today. The main game is still good fun, with semi-level difficulty and learning curve. It'll take a while to figure out how to get past some floors, but maybe you'll be fortunate enough to get farther than I was able to. Still, the banana on top are the new single or multiplayer games that you can experience. Personally, I've enjoyed the monkey fight, billiards, and golf to an extent. Half of the games were fun for me, but I'm sure all would be more fun if you had others to play it with. Super Monkey Ball's first console release was good, a little rough, but not totally unfair. The game's easy to play, yet hard to master, and you may be spending lots of time on this one, but be sure to bring others along to enjoy it too. To conclude, I give this game a play rate of... Must play. But that's only my opinion. If you have your own thoughts, leave a comment. If you like what you see, leave a like. If you think others will enjoy this, share it around the web. And if you want to see more, subscribe. Anyway, this has been Brian the Blue Game Reviews Super Monkey Ball for the GameCube. Brian here want to quickly say thanks for watching this game review as this and other content wouldn't be possible without you. I appreciate anyone and everyone who watches my videos from all across the world, but it alarms me that over 80% of viewers aren't subscribed to the channel. So I'd like to reiterate and ask you to subscribe as well as ringing the bell to stay notified. 
That way you can stay up to date with future content that'll appear on the Jacobians channel. Presently I put out new quick views and current calamities every month and my brother Alex has a brand new show all about wrestling games called WrestleBound. You might want to stick around as we're only getting started. You can also find me on a couple of other channels. I run the Starfighters Arcade channel where we take a look at the history of our machines on the floor as well as show you our new arrivals and on Millennial X where me, arcade buddies, and family get into shenanigans playing, hunting, and reviewing games. If you want to explore more content, these would be the first places to go. That's all the time I got, but be sure to click the icon now if you want to watch the previous or upcoming episodes of Game Reviews.